It's okay to be nervous. It's not okay to not do media once you have a book. For many writers, public relations feels like a dirty word. We don't want to sound salesy, and even when we deeply believe in our words, we don't want to sound like we're tooting our own horn to tell others about them. But if you want to serve your readers, you need to tell them about your work, especially if you've just written a book. Hi, I'm Clarissa Mall, and welcome to The Writerly Life, brought to you by Hope Writers, the most encouraging place on the internet for writers to make progress. Here at The Writerly Life, we help you expand your creativity, explore new techniques, and express your hope-filled words in a world that needs them. We'll help you learn to balance the art of writing with the business of publishing and learn to hustle without losing heart. You have words, and your words matter. And as you write them, you can be you, boldly, bravely, maybe even a little scared sometimes. You can be you in your writing life. Welcome to the show, friends. Lean in, grab a pen, let's chat. You've worked hard on the words you've written, and you want to share them with others. But how? How do you promote your work in a way that feels genuine to who you are and elevates your message with integrity? I'm so glad you asked, because that's what this episode is all about. Thankfully, public relations doesn't need to feel icky. Instead, it can be an excellent way to connect with your audience, to receive their feedback, and to find ways to serve them better. Our guest today, public relations strategist Robin Barrett, is going to talk about just that, With over a decade of public relations experience, Robin knows all of the fears and thrills of working with creatives to get their messages to the audiences who need to hear them. Lean in as Robin tells us more in this Hope Writers Tuesday teaching with host Brian Dixon. I think there are some things that you can do to make yourself more comfortable. The first is to find a friend, like you're in this Hope Writers community, find someone here who will do some Q&A with you to walk through some questions and get comfortable. Um, and then the second thing is really know what you want to say that like, regardless of what the interviewer is going to ask you, know your key two to three sentences on the book on what the reader is going to get out of your book, the message that you want to share, that's going to make someone stop and think and say like, Hey, I want to know more. I think this is a book that I want to read and appoint people to actually purchase and to read the book. Cause that's ultimately why I have a job is because we're pointing people to want to know more and not to give away everything in the interview. Um, so there are, there are like a ton of like really practical things. Um, but I think just the more you do it, the better it's going to be, the easier it's going to be. And it can start with just you on a phone call on a zoom link with someone and they're asking you questions from your press kit or just any question that you think you might get. Does an independent author, a self-published author, need to hire a publicist? That's a kind of a controversial question. I know we get quite often. Um, I think it depends what your goals are. Um, I don't think, like, I'm never going to be against hiring a publicist. Like, I think we bring a lot to the party. Um, I think some are better than others, and some will kind of take your money and get you a bunch of stuff that's not going to do anything. Um, And some are going to, you know, really look at what is going to be the best interview for your book or for your message. Um, But I'm always pro. Yeah. Getting some help, right? Yeah. Because there's only so much time. Yes. And I think even if you wanted to um, kind of be creative, um, if you didn't have a ton of money, if there's a service you could exchange with a PR person, um, or if you even just want like an hour consultation with them of what they right. think you should go after. Right. Um, I feel like that, that could also be really helpful. Robin, you walk me through it because you're the pro here. What would you do if you're like, oh. I want to be on these five podcasts? What's the best way to approach them? Yeah, I feel like podcasts are kind of like even the ground of media. Like anyone can have a podcast. Like you don't have to be a traditional media outlet anymore. Um, most, uh, most are just like people who are working from home. So like how I would pitch a radio station or TV station or magazine, like we've had to rethink how we pitch podcasts because they don't want to just automatically receive a copy of every book. Um, like most of them are working from home and don't have space for that. Um, so I do a lot of actually, there's no good, like 
ways to find rankings like other than iTunes, like exactly what you just said. Like I did that the other day to look for like the top podcasts for, I don't remember what niche it was. Um, and then I think I saw the question of how do you reach out? Um, if they don't have an email address listed on their website somewhere, um, I've had really good success with just messaging them on Instagram. Um, you know, that, it, that I would say is for more like the mid to lower tier, like school of awesome probably is not going to respond to that. Um, yeah. but there is, um, Oh, Trinity on my team does it. She can like pull email addresses. Um, do you know what that is, Brian? To find, to find email addresses of, of yeah. podcast hosts? Yeah. It's like she uses a th like Muckracker or something that you can pull. Yeah, I'll Muckracker. find it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's one of them. So there, there are media tools that will, that will actually, basically it's a collaborative database that will save contact information. There's a number of ways to get contact information for, for podcasts. The, the, the strategy there, the embedded strategy of what Robin's saying is go look at what podcasts are serving your audience first. So let's say I see a question here, Darina, okay? Darina is saying, what strategies would you share specifically for getting children's books out there? So what are podcasts that are serving the buyers of children's books? So who buys children's books? Probably moms and grandmas. So find what are podcasts that are serving moms and grandmas and maybe that have or that uh, even even podcasts that have featured children's book authors, right? And then and then reach out to them. And there's a lot of ways to find their contact information. But uh, what we've done in our team will the the best thing you can do is find the podcast name. So once you have the podcast name, there's three ways to find their information. You could use a a, a database tool like Muckracker or um, like there's ones like find an email address, like there's a LinkedIn, often they post their email address. So a lot of places to find an email address. Uh, you could message them on social, uh, Facebook and Instagram. We found great success with Instagram. I mean, my <laughs> Instagram messenger is crazy because I'll just hold down the button and just say, hey, like, uh, you know, hey, it's Brian, you know, got a book coming out. Like have a conversation with them. A lot of times my team will start that conversation. So it'll just say, uh, Hey, it's Brian. I love your show. Just start there. Hey, it's Darina. Love your show. And most podcasters don't get a lot of feedback. So they'd be, they'd say, Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And say, you know, what's your process for booking a guest? Cause I, I really believe that I could serve your audience. Well, they love that, right? Serve your audience. Well, and they'd say, well, we've got a form on our website, go fill out the form. Or they say, well, you know, we, we want to um, do a pre interview beforehand. Okay, cool. What's a, what's a good time to schedule it? So you, you got to start a conversation. We found the most success with starting a conversation directly uh, through Instagram as opposed to emailing. Uh, and then the third strategy would be just to actually meet them, like meet them in person, figure out who are the podcasters and, and have a conversation. Because most of the interviews that we landed as we started launching the book were friends. Like we just started with friends. And then we use those interviews with friends to, to, to pitch other people to say, hey, Brian's been on this show and it would be a really good fit for you. And then they can go and, and listen and see if I'm decent or not and if I'd be a good fit. Anything else to add there, Robin? No, I feel like podcasts are kind of like the new frontier and everyone, all the publicists I know, we're trying to figure out what to do. And I think everything you described is, yes, that's all right. Awesome. And it's about relationship. You know, like if, if somebody, if some doesn't have you on their podcast. Esther, I see you right here. So I'm just, I'm just going to say that Esther and I had a conversation. I interviewed her for something. Her podcast is booked all the way through in my, when, when my uh, book comes out, but guess what, Esther, one day I'm going to be on your show. Like I know it because I want to keep serving your people. And we started a conversation and when it's the right time, you'll come back around and go, Hey, Brian, I love to have you on my show. And we're not going to give up either. You know, my team and I will still keep, you know, serving you and reaching out to you. And so just what happens is over time, those, those roads converge, they come together at the right time. What so many of our hope writers tell us is that they would love to like sit across the table from somebody and like just share their work. Like that's sort of the dream. But the reality is a publisher is looking for, you know, how many of those people are you sitting across the table from? Like how many of those people are actually paying attention to what you're doing. So that's why we often talk about growing your stuff. Well, and like, if you have a smaller audience, like don't be discouraged. Like we, I mean, we publish authors who don't have 
that large of social platforms. Like we, we publish some books because we think that the message is just really important and they're really connected in other ways um, that it's not a social media following. Um, so it, it's always a plus, like it never hurts, um, but it's not the only thing that we're looking at. If you don't think media is for you, then I don't know if being a published author is for you. Um, Whoa, keep going. <laughs> like, I think, you know, some things that I struggle with when we have authors who don't want to do media, it's like, then why did you write this book? If you don't believe in this message enough to tell other people about it, like, you should be a writer who just journals. Like, you shouldn't be an author with a published book. Um, I will say, like, no one is going to believe in your idea more than you do. I think Robin hit the nail on the head there. Public relations is all about believing in your message and loving the reader you have to serve. When you do this, you can step out into the vulnerability of social media, podcasts, or any number of other public relations events. You'll always have your reader and message at the forefront, guiding you through your book promotion. Another of our Tuesday teachers, author Annie F. Downs, self-published her first book and went on to write many more books, which are now stocked on the shelves of stores all over the country. We sat down with Annie to discuss her path to publication, and she offered the following advice for writers who face rejection. Consider these three encouragements as you put your words out into the world. Number one, write for your readers. Your words matter to your readers, so keep providing content regardless of how the publishing industry responds. We all need to serve the readers we have, even when we receive rejections. After receiving 47 rejections from traditional publishers, Annie decided to publish her book anyway. She self-published and sold her book to the same readers she already served with her message on a regular basis. Because she had already cultivated a relationship with readers, Annie sold thousands of copies, and her book began to attract the attention of publishers. Eventually, her self-published book was repackaged and published traditionally. Number two, expand your circle. As an act of belief in your work, begin to look for areas to expand your circle of influence. Think outside the box and create new opportunities for yourself instead of waiting for an invitation. Annie mailed hundreds of copies of her first book to leaders of the groups where her target audience gathered. Then, she offered to speak at those locations. This expanded her circle of influence and put her book in the hands of the young women who needed to read it. Consider what expanding your circle of influence might look like in your current writing situation. Number three, keep trying new things. Failure doesn't have to have the last word when it comes to your writing. In fact, it can teach you a valuable lesson if you allow yourself to grow better rather than bitter. There will be failure and rejection on the path to publication. There's no such thing as an overnight success story. And your failures are often opportunities for you to exercise creativity in new ways. When faced with rejection, ask yourself, what does this failure have to teach me? Let it propel you forward to try something new and continue to write anyway. I hope you see how public relations can be a part of a vibrant writing life. Your words matter enough to tell others about them. If you're looking for an easy next step to take as you expand your writing to include PR, Robin's got one great idea to get you started. Let's listen in to her conversation with Brian one more time. Okay, so let's say somebody is there in now. They're like, Robin, you convinced me. I want to get started. What would be a good action step for our authors. Let's say that they have some sort of work that they can actually talk about. So okay. it might even be like a little ebook, but they have something that they can go talk about. What do we do next? Um, I think probably one of the easiest steps is to make kind of your dream media list of, you know, put some realistic goals. You can put some stretch goals too, but put some like, I'm going to like start to listen to these five shows. Like I'm going to watch this thing. I'm going to read this magazine. Um, and see how they're covering it. And then I'm going to reach out and see if they're interested um, in my message. Um, I feel like that's probably like an easy baby step is just to see, see what they're doing and to see if you really do fit. If this episode was helpful to you, just imagine how helpful the entire hour-long interview with Robin Barrett would be. Every week, Hope Writers members have access to a new one-hour Tuesday teaching 
with agents, publishers, social media strategists, and PR gurus like Robin Barrett. Hope Writers helps you make progress in your writing life. Whether you're writing blogs or articles, on social media, or in a book. If you want to be serious about your words and your reader, we're here for you. For writing tips and encouragement, find us on Instagram at Hope Writers or at our public Facebook page, Hope Writers Community. Last, a final word from author Alan Harrington. Public relations specialists make flower arrangements of the facts. <laughs> You've written good words. Now it's time to show the world how beautifully they've bloomed. As you commit to your message and your reader, I know you'll soon be a pro at public relations. Even when it's awkward, remember, your words matter. We can't wait to read them. If you found this episode of The Writerly Life helpful, be sure to hit subscribe and tell your friends. Rate and review the show and like and comment if you're tuning in on YouTube. Your reviews help others know that you found the content helpful. See you next time.